In this tip, you're going to learn about how to deploy Windows Server 2016 silently to a Hyper-V VM. So the first off, a few prerequisites we need to talk about. We're going to expect you to have an ISO file of the Windows Server 2016 image. Um, I get mine from the Visual Studio subscriber downloads. Um, you can get this from any channel that uh, you need. And also you're going to need the product key of this. So you're going to need to insert the product key um, inside of the answer file, along with a lot of other information that we'll, we'll show you in for the answer file. I'm directly on my Hyper-V host and I will be running all commands directly from that. Okay, the first thing we need to talk about is the Hyper-V VM. Um, we need a VM, obviously, to run the operating system that we're going to be deploying. In this case, I'm just running new VM from, from PowerShell. I've already done this and created a VM called LabDC. Actually, let's go over here and verify. I do have a LabDC VM created, so you can see here. All right, so now that we have the VM created, then we go about the answer file. The answer file has all of the logic and all of the complicated settings and everything that's required to make this happen. I'm just doing the easy, the easy part now. Uh, there may be another snip in the future about how to understand these answer files, but I've already got one created. And if you're not familiar with the answer file, how to create one, uh, a good resource is to use the Windows answer file generator, as you see here. Um, you can specify all the different settings and everything that will be applied when the, um, when the Windows operating system gets installed. Um, so feel free, that's at windowsafg.com. So feel free to do that. You have a lot of different options here uh, for operating systems and software and, uh, and whatnot. All right, so since I've already created the, uh, the answer file, Here's just a brief summary of what it does. I'm not going to go over these in specific at all, but here's kind of a list of what this answer file does. As I've mentioned, the answer file can be customized and created in any different ways that you want, but these are just some of the settings that you'll see in the answer file, which is available in the GitHub repo for you to download and customize as you see fit. It is called labtc.xml. Okay, next thing you need is the convert windows image script. This is another one that does a lot of the, the heavy lifting for us. See, this is a script available on the TechNet Script Center and it's called convert windows image PS1 or WIM to VHD. This is a script, very complicated. It's a really, really big script and it does a lot of great stuff for us. It's able to take a WIM or an ISO directly and then apply the answer file to windows and then essentially deploy the Windows operating system directly from an ISO file that we're going to hear. So um, I highly encourage you to do that. The URL to do that is um, here on line 48 if you, if you need to get that. The script has a function inside of it, so you need to dot source it to make the function available. Once you dot source it, there's a plethora of parameters that you can provide to it. But the important ones are the source path as I'm providing here. That's the path of the Windows Server ISO and the unattend path, which is the path of the answer file that I have created. Everything else for the most part is put what you want to do. You know, I'm setting my, my VHD size to 40 gigabytes. It's gonna be server standard core and specifying the VHD path type partition style. All that stuff can be modified, but the most important ones are the source path to the ISO and the unattended path of the answer file that I have created. And if you need an example, that's going to be in the GitHub repo. All right, so now that we have all the parameters defined, we're going to pass to this function. I'm just going to grab all those and grab the function and call that function. And then now you can see that it's going to provide some logging output. It's going to open the ISO. Then inside of the ISO, it looks for that WIM file. So it extracts the ISO, looks for the WIM, selects the image inside of the WIM, which is server standard core. Then it goes about creating the VHDX, attaching it, going through all the partitioning like it needs to, going through the system formatting with this part, as you can see. Then it's also going to assign the system and boot volume. And then finally, it's going to sit in this applying image to VHDX for a while because this is going to take um, a little while. So, And then once it's done, then at that point, we simply need to attach it to the VM. But we will do that whenever this is done. So um, stand by for just a second. All right, now that you can see that it is done, it has closed the VHDX, closed the Windows image, then closed the ISO, and then now it's done. 
All right, so now we should have a VHDX with Windows Server 2016 installed. Next thing we need to do is mount that VHDX to the VM we just created before. So to do that, in line 70 through 75 here, I'm first getting the VM, so getting that VM object for lab DC. I'm then using the add VM hard disk drive to attach it to that VM. Then I'm setting the boot order to make sure that the VHDX that we're attaching is, is first in the boot order using the set VM firmware command. So let's go over to our VM here and then go to the settings and make sure everything looks okay. So the firmware is boot from hard drive. The value is lab DC. That's good. And here is the hard drive. So the hard drive is attached and it is lab DC dot VHDX. All right. Next up. Now we boot it up and hope it all works. At this point, now that you're booting it up, the hard work is pretty much over. If everything works well, the VM will simply boot into Windows Server 2016 and then start the setup process, uh, getting gathering all of the answers from the answer file. And once that happens, it's, you're pretty much done. Uh, but there's a lot of things that can go wrong in here. That's why it took me a while to get the answer file. So hopefully this all works just fine. And if it does, you can then grab all of the, my hard work from the, the GitHub repo and uh, use this work for yourself. Okay, looks like it was successful. Notice that it went through some of the setup process. It went through all of those setup, creating the user account, setting the DNS um, server properties, setting some firewall settings. You can notice that it did that at first. It got all of that information from the answer file. So now that it's booted up in server core, since I set auto login, it did log in as my lab user account. At this point, we are done. So there's not much to actually making that happen, actually deploying it, but the, most all of the logic is in that answer file and then also that really important um, convert Windows image script. So that has been how to silently deploy Windows Server 2016 to a Hyper-V VM. Thanks for watching.